Hey y'all, today I just want to make a quick intro to the video you're about to watch, which was the final project for a stream restoration class that I took with a bunch of engineering students at the University of Kentucky in spring of 2018. Uh, this was actually, this class was the whole reason that I went to UK in the first place. And I took it just to become more conversant in the field of stream restoration, fluvial geomorphology, engineering, and, and so forth. But uh, more importantly, the site that we're discussing in this video, Preston Cave Spring, is now an area where Geomancer is going in and we're going to be doing some work to address the issues that are discussed in this video. So even though it is a school project, um, it seemed worth uploading because there is some, some really good footage in it and uh, it will function pretty well as an introduction to this site. There are definitely some things that I'd like to change uh, with the video or things that I, I wish I hadn't said or that I would say differently. Uh, notably, there's a spot where I talk about 2,4-D as being a great herbicide to treat Euonymus fortunii or purple winter creeper. Uh, at the time, I was working with a contractor who was seeing some success with that. Uh, nowadays, I definitely I wouldn't do that. Uh, I have, well, you know, I don't really consider 2,4-D to be a great herbicide in general, but uh, there, there are people who I really respect, who have a lot of experience, who I know are having better luck with uh, triclopyr, and uh, even better uh, in my experience and on this site in particular, we found that mechanical removal without any herbicide uh, is pretty effective as well. So uh, yeah. Also a little Easter egg there at the end of the video where I'm talking at McConnell Springs. You can see there's an excavator working behind me building uh, the stormwater wetlands that we would actually go on to win an award for later that year. So uh, this was really kind of like an embryonic project for Geomancer um, going on in the background there. And, and you can start to see our strategy unfold as we move down the watershed and now are working in Preston Cave Spring. So this is a, this is a kind of a goofy video, of course, right? It's definitely a school project, uh, but I'm proud of it. Uh, it was my first uh, foray into video editing at the time, and we got a pretty good grade on it. So uh, shout out to everyone else who was in my group, you know, the, the, my fellow Blue Barracudas. We are finally going ahead and doing some of the work in this video. And uh, so without further ado, I give you the, uh, the infamous Blue Barracudas stream restoration video. Legends of the Hidden Temple. Next question. The natives of Tahiti are called Polynesians. Blue Barracudas. Polynesians. Our story begins here, at one of Lexington's most beloved natural areas. McConnell Springs is a 26-acre natural area park in the heart of Lexington, Kentucky. We're now a Lexington Fayette Urban County Government Parks and Recreation Natural Area Park. We're home to two artesian springs that flow through a riparian forest. They lead through the final sink behind me. And where does the water go after it goes into the final sink? It comes up about a quarter of a mile away at Preston Springs. At Preston Springs. If you've never heard of Preston's Cave Spring, you're not alone. This natural areas park is nestled in the Cardinal Valley neighborhood in West Lexington, between Versailles Road and Old Frankfurt Pike. The water from McConnell Springs emerges from a karst cave into a forested valley before meandering for a third of a mile through a bedrock channel at the lower end of the Wolf Run watershed. 
With a relatively stable morphology, this stream would be classified as a B-type in the Rosgen system. But more importantly, the 16 acres of surrounding riparian forests make Preston's Cave Spring an unparalleled urban refuge. Do you guys live in this neighborhood? Yes, we do. Yeah? And what do you think of Preston Cave Spring, this park? This is a beautiful place, and we have the choice. We've got this beautiful park over here that we can walk around with the kids. This park is awesome. This culvert drains water from a stormwater retention basin across the street at the Valero Transfer Station off Old Frankfurt Pike. The basin is pumped out periodically, delivering a heavy volume of water into Prestonscape Spring within a very short period of time. These flows have caused severe incisions in the higher grade areas, eroding deep gullies into the bedrock of the park. The heavy runoff mobilizes high volumes of sediment that are then delivered into an otherwise stable stream channel. According to the EPA, sedimentation is the number one threat facing rivers, lakes, and streams in our country today. This is because it degrades water quality and destroys habitat. Here at the mouth of the stream, our bed material is comprised mostly of coarse gravel with some cobble. This is common for a car stream in the bluegrass, and it's what we might expect. But let's take a look downstream. Here downstream, just past our first gully, you can see that the bed material has changed to filth. So how are we going to fix this problem? Well, first, we'll need a lot of data. Don't do it, don't do it. Hold on. We'll it's just... for the A. Oh, it's for the a. Oh, it's for the a. Here's a nice rock. <laughs> oh, I flipped it. Oh. Boots were not tall enough to get into this pool to serve the cross section. So there's Brad just uh, getting his socks wet like a champion. It's up that cold. So how are we going to fix this incision and sediment problem? Well, since this is an urban watershed, the source of our issue is mostly outside of our project reach, which means we can't really do too much about it. So what can we do? Well, over the length of this gully here, really our objective is going to be to dissipate that force and velocity of all the water that comes tearing through here. In order to do that, maybe the best thing to do would be to put in some permanent rock structures that could create a system of step pools that will dissipate all that erosive energy over vertical and horizontal distance and could also be aesthetically pleasing. What about the riparian area? As you can see, the park is well forested with an ample riparian buffer on both sides. Typically, this should be enough to deal with any off-site runoff if it wasn't coming from these point sources down our gullies. However, despite the abundance of vegetation, we can point out that it is mostly dominated by a couple invasive species, namely amur honeysuckle and winter creeper. Now honeysuckle we can take care of pretty easily with some glyphosate and a lot of volunteer labor. The winter creeper, however, has a thicker cuticle on its leaf and is more resistant to herbicide which means we might have to use something like 2,4-D, which is both a great herbicide, but is also highly mobile in water, which means we will have to be 
very careful about our applications so that we don't impact water quality when we are restoring this area. After the invasives have been removed, we'll come back in and replant with a high diversity of native species that can provide habitat, food, and aesthetic beauty to this park. Meanwhile, a little further up the watershed. We're here at McConnell Springs, where we have some contractors doing a little work to stop erosion that has been coming in from the stormwater wetlands and rushing into the Blue Hole Spring, degrading this area. This kind of project is going to be an essential part of any sort of urban watershed management. And hopefully, this is just a precursor to some of the projects that we can get going at Preston Cave Spring to control the off-site runoff that's causing problems in that reach. It's going to be very professional. It's going to be great. Water retention basin. A well-known surveyor for his services to the government.